I've been listening to this swishing for like the last half an hour. I've been wondering what it is. You've been listening to this for the past half an hour? The swish. The... In the background of this game? Yeah. It hasn't started Oh, you yet. know, I put my left earbud in, I hear it more. Oh yeah, I took one of my headphones off. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's like peaceful, ambient sound. Oh no, I have my, both of my headphones in it. It's not, it's not happening yet. I reset the music when I hit, when I hit, uh, my page up is my record button, and it makes uh, visual novels go back by one page. Oh. Uh, so it restarted the song, and so it's not happening now. I think the swish is supposed to be... It's not happening still, but there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard I that. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a drum noise, like when you t like when you tick the the drumsticks on the rim, but like as a sh like a MIDI noise, <laughs> so it's all like crunched and abstract. This music reminds me of It sounds like somebody's Noki whipping Bay. things with palm fronds. Y yes. Or they're opening a sliding glass door in an 8-bit game. <laughs> it sounds like music you'd listen to while you were dying or something. <laughs> music that once makes me want to die. No. In a good way. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's very peaceful. I could just die. My eyes flutter open, and I'm greeted by sunlight pouring through the thin curtains. At first I'm a little confused, until I realize I'm not in the same bed I'd been in the rest of the trip. It takes me a minute to get control of my limbs again, and when I turn my head to the side, I see Jenna sound asleep beside me. The way the sunrise is shining through her blonde fur is just perfect. It's such a contrast to the dream from la the night before. That's what I was about to say that. So I was he like... remembers it. Well, so he's got superpowers. He's got ghost. In he's got ghost-induced superpowers. He can just see stuff that he didn't witness. Is as far as we can tell, he wasn't in the van when the crash happened. Oh yeah, no, I definitely don't think he was in the van when the <laughs> yeah. crash happened. He was only, he was only the, the only the only part of that entire sequence he actually witnessed in person is that he opened the back seat, he opened the back door, but in, in the part where it says he shrank into I think being Sydney, uh, what actually happened around sixty five is he passed out. So he didn't actually even register what was happening in the van, because he was so out of it. But we know, don't we, Leo? Yeah, Leo. Who you fucking, Leo? Yeah, Chula. We, our relationship started that night. <laughs> wow, how romantic. <laughs> the details of which are already starting to fade, but some of the imagery remains. The van. The albino getting hit. The tarantulas in the back. The tall figure that was watching on the hill. Ugh. It hurts to think about. I know it's, uh, obviously that whole thing is very traumatic and that was a horrible, really depressed episode we had last time, but it, in our break in between episodes just now, it, I thought about how it'd be very funny to go to your trunk for a jack to your car and just be like, oh no, all I got is tarantulas, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like a weird... Like, and you're like, you're like sifting through your tarantulas to, to find the jack. You're like, it's here. You're like, you're like pushing them aside. You're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I forgot my jack. I, you know, cause I had to make the space for all these tarantulas. Yeah. You know, my entire car inventory is tarantulas. It's like, well, do, do we need do we need My a death stranding bike only has tarantulas? <laughs> would a would a tarantula help? And then Jan's like, no. Well, so all I got is tarantulas. You, you Maybe we could MacGyver a solution yeah, out, of, out of tarantulas. <laughs> if all the tarantulas work together and lift the van, maybe we can set him free. I'm I'm still not sure if tarantulas mean anything symbolically beyond Chase being afraid of tarantulas. It, it comes up for him all the time. Yeah. It comes up so often that it came up once in Ad Astra as what it, I can only just take as just being a reference to Echo. So obviously Ad Astra was full of giant spiders, but specifically during his nightmare sequence where he's that, that where he's just flashing through a bunch of scenes just there's just suddenly a tarantula in his bed like uh, <sighs> just like with Chase and I'm like this, uh, this is like a non sequitur at this point. <laughs> They're Kyle so just cute. really doesn't like spiders, and McSkinny's running with it. More spiders, please. <laughs> other spiders, I, I kind of understand. I, I like spiders, so I don't think they're scary. But the other ones, I kind of understand. Tarantulas are fuzzy. Like, they're cute. <laughs> I don't get why you're afraid of those. Like, they're very cute. I'm, they're slow. 
A lot they make the time. my skin crawl and freak me out, but also I'm more interested in watching them. I just don't want them to be loose. I don't want to surprise tarantula. I don't want to touch a tarantula. If, if there's, but, I, I, but I'll look at a tarantula mm. and like in a cage and be like, "Look at that guy!" If somebody told they're me neat. they're like, "Oh, my tarantula is loose," my first thought would be like, "Oh no, I have to find him. He's very delicate. He's going to get crushed or something." Yeah. I'm worried about his poor little body. He's very weak. I just try not to think about how many spiders you have in your room that could just escape one day. Double digits. Probably, no. Double digits. I don't like probably, it. Probably. I don't yeah. like it. I've had a version of this before. Like I've I've had crickets in my bed before. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And I'm like, this could have been much worse. <laughs> this could have been not a cricket. I would never lose a tarantula. <laughs> I care about them much more. <laughs> that was years ago. Wow. I'm honestly surprised it's only happened once. <laughs> you just let the crickets loose once in the house. Oh, I'm There's, so sorry. They, they And then the snake. <laughs> yeah. <That> was... <laughs> I, I bring that story up because I'm like, I'm surprised that they didn't fucking kick me out. Like, my housemates let me live with them after I I lost a snake in the you house. You were, like, mad I didn't catch the snake in time. But I was like, I was like grab it, grab it. Such a She's sweet. She's nice. Please it's grab just, her. It's just such a surrealist moment of, like, I'm walking, I'm, like, walking up the stairs with, like, groceries or, or food or something. Or, I don't know. My hands were full, is what I remember. But, like, just this bizarre, surreal scene of just a, like, like, six-foot-long snake just sliding directly from your room into the bathroom across the hall and disappearing and just like just not being prepared for that the door didn't visual latch right or anything about that <laughs> it was just like and was, i was at, i was at work how do you react to that i failed the qte because i don't even know what the button was <laughs> it's a ball python they're, they're, they're so cute anyone who's yeah. seen them they have like a little do doofy face like they're very very cute yeah i don't i don't think your snake's dangerous or anything but i was just baffled by walking into a Jumanji scene. <laughs> and then she she climbed into the vents and then so we I we turned up the AC a little bit so it was a little bit colder and I left like a, a dead mouse on my floor next yeah. to my vent. I took the, the grate off. Yeah. And then uh I like I was using a compact mirror to like look in the vent to see if I can find her. Because she she escaped into the vent for like two days or something. Yeah, it was like a while. I was so I was so worried about her. I was like going around downstairs looking at the vents on the ceilings to see because I don't know how it all works or like how where they even could be. And then and then finally like I, I I was like so sad and I got up one morning to go to work and I I turned the doorknob to the bathroom and I was like why is this doorknob so heavy and yeah. then and then when I opened it she was curled around the other side of the doorknob because yeah, like, the, the cold like air that we were pushing through the vent made her leave the vent and I was like, yo, you came back <laughs> so fucking I was so, so worried just such a large snake to just be surprised by <laughs> I was like, I'm so glad I opened the door and saw her because anyone else in, in any other situation, opening a door and then having a snake on the other side of the door handle would be like petrifying to an individual <laughs> but to me, I was like, oh my gosh, my baby <laughs> oh gosh snakes Snakes! I reach out a paw and gingerly stroke Jenna's shoulder. Seeing as TJ's out of the room, I scoot myself up behind her into optimal spooning position. Fortunately, thanks to the dream, I've awoken without morning wood for a change. <laughs> <laughs> for once. It'd be really weird if you had morning wood after that dream. <laughs> oh no. I'm specifically into old men dying horribly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is going to be hard to replicate. <laughs> <laughs> The moment I touch her, though, she rolls around, nuzzling her muzzle into the nape of my neck. Her whiskers tickle at my chin, and I have, I have to make a concerted effort not to start giggling. Tee hee hee hee. <laughs> she must not be as asleep as I'd thought, because she makes a contented noise as I run my paw down to her hip. She takes a hold of my paw in hers and leans forward to kiss me. Not open mouth or anything gross and morning breathy like that, but enough to make my heart flutter. Her eyes open a crack, and she smiles as she sees me looking back at her. Hey. Hey. <laughs> finger, finger guns. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I peck her on the nose, and I can hear her tail thwap beneath the covers happily. You look beautiful. 
<laughs> so I was just thinking about rolling over and seeing Kiki face face to face with me, and me, just, hey. and her, me, her, me, me open my eyes and her seeing me, her tail. I, I could feel it wagging underneath, underneath the blanket. And you have that distorted perspective of her nose being like massive in your face. And I'm like, you're beautiful. She, and she, she wags her tail. <laughs> that just happens every day. Yeah, that is like how my morning goes. Yeah. Hmm. Truly. She inquires back, stretching her arms above her above her and yawning. Yeah. She squints at me for a moment. You have sleep crusties in your eyes. Lick them off. <laughs> Ew, no! No, Keith. I draw the line. Oh. <laughs> uh, a no. blink. Oh, well. I just woke up? That's probably why? I rub my eyes quickly. She lets out a little laugh. You sleep okay? I debate just saying yeah and leaving it at that. But last night's dream felt so particularly bizarre. It'd feel wrong not to mention. Ugh. I shrug. More weird dreams. Had one where I simultaneously got hit by and ran over someone in a van. Like the perspectives switched back and forth. Oh. That's weird. At least it's not the reoccurring shadow you dream. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Seeing myself in the mirror is rough is tough enough. I don't need to see that when I sleep. Chase, please. You're not that ugly. <laughs> I frown. You have a wonderful way of making your reassurances simultaneously slight put-downs. That's, that's a girl superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Yes. I'm being negged. Oh, shut up. I hate when guys do that. I'm just teasing you, Chase. Trying to rate someone's physical appearance has always been hard for me. Especially when they're covered in eye gunk. Uh, oh, come on. I'm gonna wipe it on you. Her face crinkles into a look of repulsion. Correct response. <laughs> oh, gross. I pull her body close to mine, our chests pressed together. This softens her scowl a bit. You know, I keep dreaming about my grandmother. Really? Yes. It's strange. Especially the one from last night. She pauses. I wait, looking at her expectantly. I was younger, in, in my bedroom back in my parents' place. Well, it didn't look like my bedroom, and everything was kind of hazy, but I could hear the old hot water heater in the corner. I was being read a story from one of those children's books with the golden spines. You know the ones, right? Yes, we do. I nod. Oh, yeah. Wow. I hadn't thought about those in ages. My parents used to read them to me all the time when I was little. Couldn't fall asleep without them. Are those called just like little golden books, I think? I think it's what I they're called. Know. Oh, I can't recall ever being read a story outside of school, so that's why it was a bit unusual. Who was reading you the story then? Hold on. I'll get to that in a second. The story was a fairly basic medieval fairy tale, with the king having been eaten by a dragon and a brave warrior venturing out to slay the beast. Despite it being a story I was being told, it was kind of like I was watching it all happen for real, like on a TV. The warrior travels a great distance to confront this dragon, but when they finally find him, they falter. Inside the dragon's lair, the warrior finds a baby dragon whom the big one was trying to protect. The king had wanted the dragons dead, stating that they were all monstrous, uncaring devils. But at seeing the big dragon protect his young, the warrior knows that this is not the whole truth and spares the dragon. This is a story from The Witcher. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I think it's like I think it is an actual just story. Yeah. Ah, noble guy. It wasn't a guy. In fact, I believe it was my grandmother. The one you told me about? Yes. How did you know that? Jenna's brow furrows slightly as she thinks. I'm not sure exactly. At the time, it felt implicit. Or obvious. Dream logic. <laughs> like, she's like, you don't know what implicit means, so I'm gonna define it for you, Chase, because you're an idiot. Impl obvious. Well, implicit doesn't mean obvious. Oh. Well, then I'm an idiot, then. <laughs> <laughs> she got tr jokes on me. <laughs> Implicit doesn't mean obvious at all. <laughs> what does implicit mean again? Implied. 
Yeah, that, that, I think obvious and implicit are like similar. Like you should infer it yourself. It's obvious. Mm. Okay, whatever. <laughs> 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 like, who else could it be? So, warrior grandmother doesn't kill the dragon. And then what happens? Her gaze shifts, as if searching for something fleeting. I don't think anything happened. It just sort of hard cut back to my bedroom. I can see the sun just starting to rise through the window. The sky is still orangey and red. It's a metaphor for you're adopted. I was that baby. <laughs> I was that baby. You know, like how it gets during a drought when there's lots of dust in the air? Or you're on Tatooine? Despite all this, the room looked even darker. I couldn't see who was reading the story to me, just that they had big red eyes. And then I woke up. Oh, it's just like her sleep paralysis demon, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you read all your sleep paralysis demon reads you bedtime stories. Aww, I wish mine did that. <laughs> that last part sounds familiar for some reason, but I'm having a difficult time remembering why. I'm not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jenna looks slightly embarrassed with herself, fussing with her head for as she sits up some. Discussing dreams can be a great way to help discern internal stressors in one's life. But also, everyone thinks they're stupid when you explain them to them. Yeah, no, pe like, people... <laughs> I was just watching Seinfeld, and there's a whole bit where Jerry's trying to flirt with some girl across the table, but Elaine's, like, trying to tell him about a dream she had that he was in last night, but he's, like, really not interested in it, and he's trying to get her to shut up. Yeah. It's like, you were in my dream last night. It was you, but not really you. And he's like, oh, yeah, really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, you had, like weird wooden teeth or something and, and he's, like, he's like trying to get this other girl to talk to him and Elaine keeps interrupting because she wants to talk about her dream <laughs> so anyway my, my stream I've been having <laughs> I only tell people about my dreams if they're in them yeah and something funny happens like, to them here's why I'm mad at you today or like they die <laughs> I'm like you did nothing everyone in my dreams has no uh, agency it's like a really common thing for my dreams oh. so like people in my dreams they Marry don't people. help me with anything we're all pop figures yeah you're just like you're there and I'm like I'm like I need help or like these things are happening or like I have an active role in this and I look around like no one else is like involved I have a weirdly long term memory dream that, 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 I, that I just remember from ages ago which is everyone betraying me oh my gosh <laughs> it's like there's like a it's like it's one of those ones where I just use understand what's happening implicitly somehow, but like all the, like there's like a werewolf or monster or something that's like hunting me, and everyone's just pointing to where I am, <laughs> and, but where I am is in a coffin buried underground, and so the werewolf digs me up and finds me, and everyone had turned me in and insulted me out instantly, and for some reason the person that I understand as being me doesn't look like me. He looks like the the fat kid from Sandlot. What? <laughs> Why? So like that's the so that's who gets caught. But I just understand that that's me somehow, <laughs> and that's the dream. We. Oh, well, that's like, I, I'm sorry I betrayed you. Maybe I just thought the. <laughs> that's like the most memorable dream I have for some reason because I still remember it now. And the werewolf had a huge dick. <laughs> <laughs> have I shown you the sleep paralysis uh, joke picture? <laughs> no, but is, is, it, just, is it porn? Kind of. There's just <laughs> there's just some lady uh, there's just some lady laying in her bed and it's like uh, and her sleep paralysis demon shows up and it's a weird gremlin silhouette monster scratchy scribbly thing. She's like you again. Uh, and she just like thinks hard and it transforms into like a wolf dude with a huge dick that's like baffled by his own transformed state and she's like and she's just smelling better <laughs> like it's like because you're imagining it there's this, this suggestion that you could just imagine it as something else like you could just transform it she's lucid paralysis demoning <laughs> but i think it's a uh, i think it's rated for all ages or whatever cuz it's like censored like it's a, as a joke is a wacky joke, but I think about that a lot. <laughs> wacky joke. Her tone is slightly defensive, the Fennec using words way too fancy for this early in the morning. A little bit. Yeah. What are the big words? I don't know, I mean, it's just, I think he's, I think it's just... Discern? Discern <laughs> internal stressors. I, I get why you don't want to hear that right when you wake, wake up. You're like, shut sure. the fuck up, Jenna. Talk about, like, cereal or something. Just think about the time I was made fun of for, uh... Talking about Pokemon Go's limited biodiversity. 
<laughs> and I'm like, that's just what the word means. There's uh, not enough types of Pokemans. Yeah, no, I I understand that. It's completely. not deep. And I was like, ha, you said those words. And I'm like, what? We do we not understand what these words? Fuck you, <laughs> not Marty. <laughs> But it was, uh, it was specifically the Pokemon Go uh, Detective Pikachu event was happening, so they were all pretty much only spawning the Pokemon from the movie to, pr to, pr to promote it. I hate it. that movie. And I got sick of the Pokemon very quickly. Uh, it's a bad movie. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. a very bad movie all the way through, and every time that somebody brings it up and t as being like, 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 recently The Last of Us came out, and people are talking about it as being like the cure for the video game curse, where every video game movie is bad, and I'm like... People be going, oh yeah, and they show like Sonic the Hedgehog and P and <sighs> Detective Pikachu, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you thought Detective Pikachu was the good video game movie? I'm like, I don't, first of all, I'm like, what, on what standard do you think that's a good video game movie? But you didn't think Silent Hill, Resident Evil, or the Mario Brothers movies were good movies because those were all better than Detective, Detective Pikachu I by a wide margin. <laughs> called the twist at the end immediately, immediately, like, like honestly, like probably like eight minutes in, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. okay, I see where this is going, okay. And is that Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Well, I also I spoiled the shit out of that movie for you. You did. Yeah, because I saw it earlier. And I, I gave you the little Pokemon like collectible card that came with my ticket or whatever. Yeah. And we were at a Michael's and you were looking for something and I was just there. So I was just ranting about this movie because I hated it the entire time we were there. I remember there. like uh, <laughs> like, fucking... I was just going on about it. I was forever. being mad that there was like less. I was like, why is there? I've only seen like six types of Pokemon. Yeah. Why are there not? A million. You could have incorporated them into everyday life, like how the Flintstones just has animals everywhere that do jobs. Like that would be that'd be the cutest thing ever. Yeah. Why did they just do that? Why did they make them all so ugly? <laughs> why is that annoying guy in it? Or why is there this secondary protagonist that they must have like decided to add to the movie after they finished filming it? Because she they have to like excuse her from the scene every time any plot scene happens. Yeah. She literally gets like. For a while there, she gets like kidnapped each time, or something bad happens. But at one point, like the Bulbasaurs just shoo her away. Like, no, you don't get to be in the plot. Like right before the meeting that where revelations about to happen, those Bulbasaurs just shoo her away, and she has to go away for like, no reason. So that like, she no can't, real good just, so, just so she won't be in the scene where plot happens. She's she's in none of the plot, despite being in almost the whole movie. They, it's really distracting that they specifically remove her every time anything important starts to happen. I thought all the actors were bad. It's a bad movie. It's Everything bad about movie. that movie is bad. I hate, I hate that movie. <laughs> the entire ending's bad. Everything's bad. The whole movie's bad. Cringe. The end. <laughs> Embarrassing. Ew. Every time someone's like, this is the cure for the video game movie, I'm like, I, I, I don't understand what universe you exist in where you think this is the one good video game movie and you've hated all of them so far. Maybe if this is where your standards are, you should have loved most of them. Maybe they're being ironic. Like, you must love Prince of Persia and you must love... Uh, like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, like all of them, especially the bad ones. Like, because those, like, most of the bad Resident Evil movies were still better than Detective Pikachu. I'm fucking I'm burning it down. Fuck that movie. <laughs> yeah, fuck that movie. Come fight us. And I, I never watched Sonic, though. I just refused to watch it because oh, yeah, the trailer no. looked exactly the same as De Detective Pikachu with the exact same sense of humor. And I'm like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> this looks not funny or entertaining. So, no. We'll see how the Mario movie turns out. Fucking Chris Pratt. Someone explained the plot of Detective Pikachu, or Sonic 2, I think, or whatever, the one with the knuckles in it. I'm like, that's the plot of Dragon Ball. <laughs> like, that's, like, when I, like, oh yeah, it was Toaster. Toaster was explaining the plot of, like, Knuckles to me, and I'm like, that's just Vegeta. This is just Dragon Ball. Just space aliens. Well, just, like, we, to find it's like, the we're emeralds. space aliens, and you're like <clears throat> me, Kakarot, and I'm here to fight you, and a fish out of water. Wow, we're all not from this planet. We don't understand this place, and... It just sounded. It just seemed really stupid. I guess not Vegeta. I guess it's Raditz. Honestly, I I, I I like Dragon Ball and not Dragon Ball Z, and I never, the whole world's gonna hate me for saying that. But I never really watched Dragon Ball Z. I tried when I was younger because I wanted to hang out with my little friend, my little boyfriends, but I just couldn't get into it. I was like, this is boring. I've heard a lot of takes. That Dragon, Dragon Ball Ball's is really better cute. than Dragon Ball Z, and the Dragon Ball Z is it's, just it's kind like of like a fun like, adventure story. Well, Dragon Ball Z is intensely it, repetitive and yeah, also yeah. lacks structure to the point where it forgets <clears throat> its own characters exist half the time and they just quietly vanish from the story. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, people anyway. die over and over and over again and all this stuff and whatever. We're, we're, we're post-traumatic uh, 
from the other episode. We're, we're like post traumatic tangent happy. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is, dreams are often deeply personal abstractions that... She stops, frowning to herself some, and then glances at the clock on the nightstand. It's probably going to be our turn on search duty here in a bit. The information we got from Micah, Micah, Micah. is really helpful, if true. Here's hoping he pulls through with his investigating. Yeah. To be honest, I was a lot happier in thinking Carl just went on a bender and got lost somewhere. He still might have, judging by how you said Micah described him acting. Hmm. This would not be a logical connection to make in the real world, where you need proof, but in the conventions of storytelling, was Micah in the van? Because Micah keeps asking about Leo. Oh no! Michael asks. Michael, Micah specifically always asks about Leo in every scene. Well, initially it seemed like it's because he was afraid of him or something. Like he's gonna come yeah. beat him up. Like oh, that the scary guy's not here, right? But then, then he asked about him again, and I was like, oh, I think they fucked. Like that was like my. I was like, I think that, that there's some there was some yeah. romantic relationship. And Micah's relationship. sketchy, and then he disappeared for a few years before we left. Yeah. Hmm. Oh no. Hmm. At least now we know the general direction to look. Right. I look at the neatly made bed on TJ's side of the room. He had initially given us a bit of a strange look when I mentioned I was going to bunk with Jenna tonight. I can't tell if that's because he was curious about our relationship, or offended that I wasn't sleeping with him. Why is there enough chase to go around? <laughs> He's such a catch? Uh, <laughs> that goatee is so handsome. <laughs> What are Chase's positive qualities? <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's not Leo. <laughs> wow, what a standard! Yeah, he's not Leo or Brian. Yay! Yay. Not a lot of options in this town. Just just let. <laughs> you know what? Flynn and Carl deserve each other. <laughs> I clarified that he didn't snore, just in case. God. It gives me a heart attack every time I hear that. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. I'm, I'm cured. I haven't had my phone set to vibrate for so long because of my job that I, every, every time any vibrate noise comes up, I know it's not me. I'm safe. I have to change my phone's ringtone because it's it, it's melodic in a way that I've been hearing everywhere lately. Oh. And I, that's how I know I've been stressed because I've been hearing it in TV shows and I've, like, I've been like... I've been hearing it in other things, like, like mu music and you're stuff. You're getting phantom moments. And I'm like, it sounds like my phone. And I was like, okay, hey, it's not. I need to change my ringtone, because it's... Yeah. I think about the old days when I'd have phantom vibrations. Like, I would think that my phone vibrated when it didn't. Because it's just, you just get, you just, it happens often enough that you just start making up the sensation, essentially. But, I, yeah, that's, that's just gone. That's why I live on a deserted island for a little bit. Yeah, I just need to, just... Ex escape into the hyperbolic time chamber for a few years. Just disappear. Come that'd back be, tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be nice. Dennis' phone vibrates beside us. She lets out a little sigh, clearly comfortable and not wanting to move. If I had longer arms, I'd grab it for you. So romantic. <laughs> oh, such a gentleman. <laughs> Don't worry, you're plenty long, Chase. Oh... She winks at me before rolling over and grabbing her phone. I stare ahead with the biggest goddamn grin on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one of the beggar, better ego boosts I've received in recent years. In years. <laughs> uh, right up there with when the hipster barista girl at the downtown coffee shop told me I had foreign rock star vibes. It's the fucking goatee. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, when you have like rock star looks like Chase foreign rock star vibes. Fucking blue shirt and khaki pants. Uh, the, it was like the take me to the Greek, that British Get into guy. The Greek. Yeah, the British guy. That's, that's what I think of. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Yeah. Just he's like he went off the deep end as like a conspiracy <clears throat> theorist. He just says the most insane shit now. Whatever that means. She taps away at her phone for a moment before looking over at me. I'm gonna meet up with TJ down at the diner for breakfast. Some eggs and bacon sounds amazing to me right now. 
mainly because I'd rather be with a pig. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually not the sort of person who gets hungry as soon as they wake up, but that does sound pretty good. Yeah, with some jam and toast, too. Now you're talking. She gives my rump a little pat, and my heavy tail thumps against the mattress. I know you took one last night, but I should probably take a shower first. Gotta, you know, get all the eye goop off of me that's so offensive to you. Oh. She cants her head in my direction, setting her phone back down. Thank you for being so considerate to those around you, Chase. We appreciate it, truly. I grunt idly and slide myself off the other side of the bed. I'll meet you down at the diner. I'm gonna walk down there this time. The reception's been kind of weird this morning, but I'll text TJ your order. Thank you. I, gi I give her a little thumbs up and she smiles, leaning over the edge of the bed to begin rifling through her suitcase. An excuse to split up. That always goes well. Especially for Chase. Yeah. What's going to happen now that we're split up? Is it going to be Well, we're not we're Duke? not peeing outside, so Yeah, but we're going to go, we're going to be without anybody else. Yeah. I feel like someone's going to confront Ryan. us. Brian. Hasn't shown up yet. I'm scared about that. Brian's not set up in this route not yet. Not really. So I, I, think, I was, I I was think, trying to so think about I don't think Brian would just show up out of nowhere. Yeah. But Duke has been set up. Yeah, that's true. When I, set, when I step out about 20 minutes later, I notice that my phone is flashing with that new notification light. Oh, you have that turned on. Hmm. <laughs> don't like that. I don't like that feature on phones. I don't even know if my phone has that. Some people have, like, the fucking flashlight turn on whenever they get a notification. Ew, I'm like, no. Mm. I click it on and notice one new message. Well. Uh-oh. <clears throat> it's... <laughs> okay. All caps. It's Micah. Your BF is fucking shit up. Hitting Clint. Get down here to Jasmine Street now. Oh, shit. God damn it, Leo. Oh, BF. Boyfriend. I was like, yeah. best friend? Okay. No. No, Okay. I sent out a group text last night updating the group on what happened with Micah. Everyone got back to me, except Leo, who never responded. It showed that he'd read the message, though, so I didn't question at the time. I quickly grabbed my keys and head out. I make sure to park at least a quarter mile down the street, past the intersection onto Jasmine. From there, I make my way to, on foot, huffing my way down the gravel road. As I fast walk, I notice that there's little puddles everywhere, but there was no rain last night. At least, if there was, I was sleeping too deeply to notice. Huh. I can still practically smell the smoke of the bonfire from yesterday as I draw closer. I imagine they probably let it burn down to ashes last night, that group not seeming like the real fire safety type. That might be Clint. Uh... Fuck you! A voice cracks through the silence, past a burnt-out trailer down in the valley. It's shrill and raspy, a violent clash that sounds like garbage cans getting knocked over soon follows. It's unmistakably Clint. There's another voice that follows, this one lower. It's quiet and threatening, but I can't quite make out what he's saying. Something about making Clint's life hell. There's an accent to the way the R's are being rolled, and I realize quickly it's Leo. His, his English always gets worse when he's emotional, which is all the time. <laughs> yeah. I creep, I creep up beside his shed full of what looks like copper tubing. Of course. Wondering if it's too late to turn back. Peering around the corner, I can see Clint knocked on his ass. A can of half-eaten eaten beans spilled all over oh, his crotch. That sucks. <laughs> He's almost completely covered in trash. Jeremy's also next to him, holding his arm and looking like he's about to start bawling. Oh, his own arm. Yeah. He, he, he just went down in one hit, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no sign of Micah or Heather, though. Where is he, huh? You gonna tell me? Eat shit, faggot. I don't know where your fucking friend is. That's bullshit. Leo snaps back, 
Clint flinching some as he slides himself further beside behind the trash can he knocked over earlier. A hypodermic needle is dangling oh from his thigh, probably poking him through his jeans. He doesn't seem to notice, eyes flicking around wildly as if searching for something. You won't be so loud soon. Leo growls, tail raised and bristling. It's strange to see him flash his teeth like this. Leo getting truly angry was always a rarity growing up, the wolf usually being the one, the one trying to pacify everyone else. Whatever his reasons, he's not having any of Clint's shit today. He snatches the ringtail by the scruff of his neck, Clint thrashing for a second before Leo tightens his grip. Jeremy looks up at the two of them, his eyes like saucers. I know you all tried to rob Carl's place, but didn't work, huh? Carl got spooked and ran off, and you said you were going to handle him. Well, how'd you handle him? Something like how I'm about to handle you if you don't tell me? God damn it, Leo. There goes Micah's cover. So much for trying to do this the subtle way. You did group text everyone. Yeah, that wasn't the... <laughs> I don't know. I think it was, it was something maybe you should talk about like in person or something. Like, yeah. I don't know. Seems like something you could tell... Uh, just Jenna, basically. Yeah. Everyone else, I don't know how much it works to tell anyone else. Like, because... I don't know how Flynn will react. We kind of know how Leo would react. And TJ would probably tell Leo at some point. Because TJ just tends to tell Leo things that we don't mean from... That's how he showed up at that diner that one time. Yeah. TJ's manipulatable. He, well, he just, he just he doesn't grasp that he, he shouldn't tell people yeah, things. That, and how, how bad things are in the group or what divisions there are. He's just like, <laughs> everyone want to go hiking? Yeah, we're having fun, right? Everyone's happy, right? Sweet. Right? right? Huh? Right? Mm. <laughs> I feel like I should step out of my hiding spot and say something to intervene, to do fucking anything to stop this before it escalates. But I just stand there, saying and doing nothing. Clint writhes just enough to clutch at Leo's wrist, his long, unkempt fingernails digging into the white fur. Ah. Uh I didn't see him, I swear. I ain't seen him at all, not, not since last week. And we ain't done none of that Robin shit from his place. House is fucking cursed. His bulging eyes shift to Jeremy as if waiting for confirmation from that chubby Fennec. He's met with only silence. Leo's nostrils flare, shaking his head. You know what happened. Fuck, I know you know, goddammit. Don't lie to me. Y you don't know shit. S sounds like someone's been lying to you, and I think I know who. This is very clearly not what Leo wants to hear. Jow is pulling back and exposing more of his teeth in a silent snarl. I need to find him. I need to fix this, and you two sacks of shit are going to help me. The wolf throws Clint back down atop Jeremy, the two colliding with an audible thud. Jeremy yelps, clutching his arm again. Leo must have really heard it earlier. Psst. That's Micah? There's a sharp whisper from a broken down RV to my left. Through the dusty, broken windows, I can see the familiar outline of a pair of ridiculously large ears. <laughs> Micah. I crouch down, clutching my tail in my paws so it doesn't flop around behind me. Quietly, I make my way to the door and step inside. Careful not to step on any broken glass on the way in. The smell inside is awful, and despite the arid climate, it's surprisingly damp and moldy in here. How? Mike is hunkered down behind an overturned cabinet, glancing briefly at me before returning his gaze to the scene unfolding outside. <clears throat> I'm fucked. He mutters. And so is your friend. All thanks to him of all people. Micah points to the wolf outside, whose focus of attention has shifted to Jeremy now. I didn't know he would react like this. I whisper back. Yeah, I thought you were just going to call the cops on me. Didn't expect this from the goody two-shoes Echo Gang. Micah frowns deeply, and I notice a heavy pipe wrench clutched in his small paws. Whoa, are you going to try to hit it? Try hitting him with that? Micah swallows. He was asking me about me by name earlier. 
Jeremy said he hadn't seen me. Then Leo punched him in the arm so hard he hit the dirt. This is a... just in case. You better not have fucking hurt him, you fat fuck. Another cry of pain. I think Leo hit him again, but it's hard to tell through my spot in the window. The bat's gaze shifts back over to me. What the fuck are you still doing here? Go out there and stop him, you dumb shit. You called me over. I know, I know. <laughs> Micah whispers harshly, his raspy voice intense. Uh, oh. Right, but... But what? I sigh, rubbing my palm over my face. We need to find Carl, but this isn't the way to go about doing it. Nothing. I'll do it. Good. You're a schizo, but I never really took you as the sort to be down with torture and shit. Can you stop? <laughs> He's so mean. He says it so much. Part of me is kind of happy to see Clint get his ass kicked, though. Oh, yeah. Fucker deserves a deck to the jaw every now and then, but I've counted three. A flicker of a nervous smile crosses the bat's face. Yeah, not cool. Thanks. He says that last bit too quiet, so quietly I almost miss it. The bat's already back to smushing his nose against the dusty window, trying to get a good look at what's happening. His brow furrows. Wait. Where'd he go? His ear perks, and his yellow eyes widen. Oh, piss. It takes me a second, but I hear it too. Footsteps. And they're getting closer. Micah scrambles to the back of the RV, opening the half-busted bathroom door and jamming himself inside. Don't let him see me. What? Oh, shit. It's just Leo. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Easy for you to say. <laughs> it's just Leo. Calm down. Mm. <laughs> it's concerning that he has difficulty facing Leo, given that they've been in a relationship. I take a deep breath and make my way to the door of the RV, pushing it open. It proceeds to promptly fall right off its rusted hinges, landing on the dirt below. Leo stands about five feet away, his look of anger shifting to surprise. Chase? Fuck. What are you doing here? I'm not sure what to say. Behind Leo, I can see Clint and Jeremy slumped against the side of the mobile home. I decided to turn the question back to him, swallowing back the lump that had crawled its way up my throat. Me? Me? Leo, what the hell are you doing here? We had a plan. Yeah, well, so do I. I'm gonna fix this, and you don't have to worry about a thing, okay? Leo, we're in this together. We're not kids anymore. Look, I know you've been away a while, yeah? But these guys? He points back to Jeremy and Clint. They just hurt people. Always have. That's all they do. Just a bunch of gay-bashing speed freaks. And now they've crossed the line. Leo steps up, placing his large paws on my shoulders. Hey, want, want, want to have Leo ruined? Even more? Sure. For a fun moment. He's wearing shorts. What? <laughs> Are they like jean shorts? People draw him with pants uh -huh. a lot because of this frame, because how he looks here. But in every CG we've ever seen of him, we can see below his knees, and he's wearing shorts. Oh. Da, 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 da. I mean. <laughs> so everyone has to re everyone has to revise their fan art to give Leo jorts. I wear uh, like I don't know. <laughs> I have a. I wear jean shorts, but I guess girls wearing jean shorts and guys wearing jean shorts is different. I guess. No, I, I, I don't, I don't if, have a thing against jean shorts. Is it the length of the I'm shorts? I'm just saying that the aesthetic that people assign to Leo is not what he looks like. I like that he's not wearing pants in the desert like a fucking dumbass. Yeah. That, that's what I have to say about yeah. that. No, it's very common here anyway because, yeah, it's fucking hot. It sucks. But, like, yeah, like. Look, look, at, look at his shorts. I mean, they could be like a. He's been wearing um, shorts this whole time. Like a that material that's like, you know, canvassy. Look at them shorts. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I actually like that better anyway. I ruined your entire. I don't know if they're visible here. Uh, they're just really long, but I always forget. Like, 
<laughs> I used to work in clothing retail and I used to have guys all the time. They're like, I can't wear shorts that are that short. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? It's like a 19 inch inseam, dude. Like those are not even fucking yeah. short. But they're yeah. like, oh no, it's like, that's too short. I'm self-conscious. I'm like, fucking losers. <laughs> like wear booty shorts, please. Wait, I think, I think realistically everyone's wearing shorts except for... Except for, oh yeah no, <laughs> but he's wearing shorts. I would. <laughs> I, that that one's kind of harder for me to imagine because of his top. Because it seems like, he, like he's wearing like a work shirt. He looks like he's dressed up. Yeah. Yeah, Leo has shorts that cut off right after the screen. <laughs> Revise all of your fan art immediately at Leo Gunpoint. Yeah, fix it right fix now. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. I flinch. He notices, then a hurt expression crosses his muzzle as he draws back. I'm gonna fix this, Chase. Trust me. Please. No. I don't. No. <laughs> he is not trustworthy. One, he doesn't understand what's broken. Like, he literally, like, he's, he keeps... His entire motivation here is that he doesn't have us right now. So he's trying to fix that. And he's trying to do that via saving Carl. Like, that'll fix everything. That's his mission when they're unrelated problems. Yeah. Like, saving no, yeah. Carl is not related to anything that's happening between him and Chase. But he's making the, like, the like the hero narrative be a thing that would fix all of his other problems. It's like Mighty Ducks. If the <laughs> if they win the game, the cancer kid will get better and whatever. Like, whatever the fuck. Like, that kind of storyline. Like, the sick person will recover magically because uh. you won a sports game. Like, it's it's he's, he's doing everything except addressing the problem. And he doesn't even acknowledge what the problem is. Because the most damning thing about the whole pinball moment was the fact that, like... When we confront about him, hit him about it later, he doesn't even identify the problem. He's, he thinks Jenna was the problem in that scene somehow. Which is wild. Which means he's holding on to all this baggage over the phone prank that happened years ago. But like, he's, but like to such an unhealthy extent that like, she didn't do anything in that scene. And she's somehow the problem in the, in the sexual assault pinball machine scene. It is, he, like, it is frustrating when somebody just completely misses the mark. And it's yeah. like, it can be sad sometimes when someone's like, I'm really sorry about this. And I'm like, that's not even what I'm upset about. Yeah. Like. You're you're sorry for that? That's not a, the problem. Like, or just the realization that like somebody can be in the wrong so clearly that literally everyone universally can identify what's wrong and what happened and what they're doing wrong, and then they can't, and like they end to the point where it's somebody else's fault, and they completely reconcept like reconceptualize the entire scenario, and you're like, I don't. How do you even unpack when someone processes things that way? It's like um, I just. I told you I just went and saw the whale and there's a point in that where they talk about like basically about there's a whole point where Moby Dick wants to kill the whale because he thinks that's going to solve his problems but in reality like in that book everyone who's on that boat and everyone who sees this knows that the whale in itself is a distraction from his own sad life that will never be fixed if he kills that whale but everyone nope. has to just suffer as a result of him not understanding that his problems are internal problems and it's not the outside existence of this random whale that's mm. causing him all these personal problems and obviously that's like a metaphor in the movie but like it's the same metaphor of the book right well no i mean they talk about the book specifically is it not a moby dick adaptation the, no the, the whale with brendan fraser i've never seen the whale so i i, don't... I oh yeah, but I told you it's what he's getting an Oscar nod for. It's it's that it's, doesn't, it's, it's, it's that, where he plays. He like, could have been getting an Oscar nod for an adaptation of Moby Dick called The Whale. No, no. The, <laughs> the joke is that he's an he's a morbidly obese person, and he grades essays. And his favorite essay of all time is an essay a kid wrote about Moby Dick. Hmm. And when he gets stressed, he reads the essay to himself because he has like a tr an actual passion for essays because he's like a teacher. And so he likes that essay because that essay is really honest. But the kid just basically talks about how uh, this guy, how Ahab's basically an idiot for thinking that killing the whale is going to solve his problems because the, he, he has his own problems and the whale doesn't even know that Ahab wants him killed. But, and that's also his problem? Well, you know, the whales could be a metaphor for Brendan Fraser because he's a 
Chinese. He's, he's, yeah, well, I mean, it's a like, very... Yeah, it's, it's, a very, it's very on the nose. It's a very universal and extremely, like, understood interpretation of But, but of I think that, the argument is that, that book. his life wouldn't be better necessarily if he lost all that weight. He has other problems in his life, and so people think that killing the whale is going to solve Brendan Fraser's mm. problems, but in reality, he has problems that pre-exist and, like, are bigger than himself. Mm-hmm. But, and, you know. And there's Leo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, basically, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to say, is a- always Ahab, fight, he's always fighting something that's not actually what his problem. Yeah, he's is. he's obsessed with with chasing the white whale when in reality, Ahab over here has got his own fucking problems he needs to sort out, and he's causing everyone else to suffer because he's unable to realize that those outside problems are not his actual actual root of his actual problems. Leo's Captain Ahab. Look how kind of nice this like scene is. It's just so bright and serene. It is, despite the horrible the, happenings. Yeah, or even how they, the text describes this area. <laughs> it's also like the greenest place in all of Echo. Yeah, if you spruce this to clean up a little bit, you can make yeah. this very nice. Leo, I don't know. This is kind of fucked. You're just going to get yourself in more trouble, and I don't want that. Look, it's just like we talked about the last about last night. Everything's going to be okay. Gonna with an E. Also, we didn't talk last night, so... Leo, what are you up to, buddy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just specifically reinforced the fact that we did not talk last night. So, who are you talking to, Leo? You seeing another chase already? Because that, that, whatever is going on with Leo and other chase is still canon in all the other routes, I guess. And we have to just worry about that. We have no idea what happened with Leo and other chase and Carl's route, because he just wasn't there. We never saw him after the lake. Yeah. Because it was just Jenna, Carl, and Raven. <laughs> MVP <laughs> Raven. Yeah. Best character Raven. <laughs> I still like Kudzu. <laughs> Wait, what? Leo, you and I didn't talk last night. I haven't seen or spoken to you since Wednesday. Leo just stares at me, visibly confused. I'm sure you are, bud. He looks down to his feet. Then back up again. No. I was watching Carl's place and you came over. I told you about this, and the need for action here, and you agreed with me. I blink up at him. After the conversation with the Micah, I went straight to bed. I definitely didn't go back all the way to Carl's. I forget, did we... we, did, we I think Chase doesn't sleepwalk, right? Just Micah does? Chase just has sleep paralysis and dreams yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So Chase wouldn't ever, even in his, even he couldn't come up with an explanation of him like sleepwalking over there or anything. And also, like I don't know, Jenna was there. I feel, I feel like she would probably notice yeah. and all this other stuff. He would have had to make his way back. He would have been covered in dirt. Like he def, I, you know, Leo was just having a fucking time. It was probably just a dream or something. Hmm. Don't think so. He sucks his tongue for a second before speaking again. Have you seen Micah? Gotta ask him a few questions. By asking him questions, you mean like pummel him? Because <laughs> that's how yeah. you ask questions. I tattooed questions on my knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I got questions for you. <laughs> uh, no? I lie. Ugh. I'll track him down. Canine powers and what have you. He gesticulates with a loose swirl of his paw before letting it fall limply back to his side. Is he, you know... <laughs> <laughs> a little limp-wristed there. Hopefully Micah took a shower recently. I doubt that, given the... I don't think they can here. Might do that thing where we ask him a few questions one at a time and make sure their answers match up. I read about something like that in a spy novel once. I don't wow, think you, you have, have, to you have a, such a plan, Leo. I think you can just figure that out on your own without like references to anything. Uh, Leo's Leo's plans are so disastrously half baked. It just it just makes me think of like the contrast between like all those like big revenge movies where like this guy's gonna go on a rampage and we, we and it's like yeah, the honesty kind of has school shooter vibes, but we're supposed to be like, wow, what a cathartic movie of yeah, fuck society, lol. But like. Then you have like I don't have I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Where her plans just go horribly awry, and she's like, "Yeah, we'll just like just track it to this. We'll just track the laptop, and it's it's here. Take me to this drug den. And I'll just like 
like punch someone or something like, like she has like so, so little plan because she just thinks things will work out and they horribly don't for the entire movie you gotta like cherish those people though i love that movie so much it's super underrated that movie. poor woman just wants her laptop back like so much was happening and just just she's like like the ins- practically like the inciting incident of the movie is where she finally snaps and confronts somebody over not picking up after their dog. Like it's a stupid, brilliant movie. I like movies where it starts off like seemingly like it's gonna be kind of boring and maybe about nothing, but it just goes immensely off the rails. <laughs> like I love movies that are just like this is a just simple keeps premise. Spiraling. Oh wait, <laughs> it's really not a simple premise. Like. Like Leo's like, I don't know. I'm just gonna go in there as a gi- giant wolf man. I'm just gonna punch some people, and then I'll have answers? Question mark. Yeah, they'll answer me if I. I heard about punch this in a spy right? movie. You you uh, you both ask questions, and then uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't finish the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and if they don't, Leo looks at me as if he wasn't expecting me to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he really didn't think about that. Uh. This, the, you can mine a lot out of parallel at, at a drawing parallels between Amicus and Leo, and this is one of them. Where the, they, they times just where, don't think things through at all. Well, yeah, like all those like all those times where Amicus just like, just wants to believe the message of the parents, and then Marco gives him the slightest pushback, and he's baffled. Like he literally hasn't even considered the idea of questioning this thing, and then Leo's reactions being similar along these lines. There's also the part where like. They both give uh, the protagonist a keepsake right before d- they are apart for years. Between the uh, the the ring and the bracelet, and uh, the uh, ring. I don't think I've talked about this in this series, but like I do, I did like a, a a sprite edit where I gave Amicus Leo's clothes just just kind of observe like some of these weird parallels between the two characters, and I've talked to you about it already. So mm-hmm. this is just for the benefit of the audience, but like. Just noticing the fact that, like, the amicus speech that people think is romantic and all that, but also, like, I'm like, the stuff he's saying doesn't make any sense. When he talks about the universe being curved, and, like, the further you get away, the closer you get to being back, and all these other nonsense. And I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. A reoccurring motif in Echo is that you're moving in circles. <laughs> it's like, hang on a minute. This is th- There's more parallels between these two universes, between amicus and Leo, in specific ways. I wonder if that'll show up in the in the smoke room too. I think it might just be like it's like a running theme of like yeah. reoccurrences. I guess it depends on how how intentional it is and whether or not it's like explicitly something that they give notes on. Like, hey, put this in these other stories too, even though I'm not writing them. Like, this is a thing you need to reinforce or not, or if there are even our characters in those universes that are supposed to in any way echo Leo and Amicus. <laughs> but uh, but I said the word. I said the word. No, I mean, there's a lot of times where, like, like I'll, I mean, it, it could it could be, like, And they both come from religious families. <laughs> it, but it could just be, like, themes that maybe, like, the writers relate to or something. I, I find, like, if I and write... They, they if, both have heteronormative ideas of how great relationships should work. With, with the families? No, they, well, they both, oh, 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 both I, oh, Amicus I, and Leo. Yeah, I, know, I see what you're saying. Like, Amicus, you can't, can't, can't go anywhere near his butt. He's got to be the man in the relationship. Yeah. And, and he, Leo constantly calls Chase... Chula. A, yeah, which is which was is what you would call a woman. Mm-hmm. It's a gendered it's a gendered pet name that gen- refers to Chase as the woman of the relationship. Yeah, yeah. You have, like, the idea that there has to be, like, a manlier one and a more feminine one in a relationship. Yep. In reality, you just walk outside and you find people that are, like, like very similar to each other who date or yeah. people who are like neither of those things who date who are just people that like each other you know yeah but nothing about leo seems to be inspired by tide pods so <laughs> <laughs> it's one difference between the two I'm trying to think what he look like i was trying to think like what what does he look like he's inspired by but i can't put the colors to anything leo is strange i like his burnt red fur like he's like he's cool looking. yeah He's neat, he but also like a sports the, team. there's also like very specific elements to his design that are interesting to parse. Like, yeah, like he has these white eye sockets with white eyebrows, and he has the white underside, and then very specific, like yeah, like this, like he's all like this burnt red color everywhere else, but he has like this like lightning bolt of black that comes out of his eyes and wraps around the back of his head, seemingly. It might go down his back, I'm not sure. Like, there's like, he's a 
in some ways he's almost like less naturalistic in design and more like original character do not steal than like a lot of the rest of the cast yeah because he's definitely he definitely took liberties with his fur colors yeah like, he has, like he as has much a lot as... of harsh boundaries that are like more like furry ocs than yeah. almost anyone else in the cast including a raccoon a character known for having big like patterns on their body of like here's the stripes and here's the eyes the eyes and so yeah, on. yeah but they, they just like they ran with like the he, just, he looks like a raccoon in like a realistic yeah. way they didn't, they didn't take any weird liberties with it like he, tj carl and jenna are both very like, true to their well, animal they're more uniform yeah you have do you have something i did i lost it oh no <laughs> I, I was thinking i was like I'm like you made a hand gesture and i'm like oh no oh no, no oh, okay i remember what i was gonna say sorry i was thinking I think it was very smart to do the circles around the eyes, though, just because you, you make it more expressive because you're able yeah. to see the sh like the lines around its eyes a lot more. Um, but I definitely don't think it's like that is normal. Because what what kind of wolf is he supposed to be again? I think I think he might be a Mexican red wolf. I don't like like the, he has like the big round spots around the eyes like a dog would like like a dog you draw in a cartoon. Yeah, like a dog named Spot or something. Also, like no wolf is red really. Not like that red, you know. Like yeah, it's a. Do do. They're not Mexican restaurants. <laughs> Damn it! I can't hit the, we, the. We live in an area that probably has like, if I had to give an actual estimation about how many Mexican restaurants are in our town, it would on it would it would be at least like sixty four. There's so many. That's a lot of them. It's not even like if it's food trucks everywhere everywhere. It is definitely like the most prevalent food type around here. Not that I'm complaining at all. I just wish there was more Indian restaurants. There's only like two. God damn it! I hate phones. I'm, I, just, I'm just trying to get a single good look at this picture without fucking everything up, and it's just a challenge. Oh, God damn it! I'm fucking everything up, and I'm wasting everybody's <laughs> time. Like this is basically the animal. Yeah. And it's like no, it basically looks more like a, a cross between a wolf and a coyote. Yeah. In terms like, of coloration, like he, re he resembles a coyote, so he should look more like the other coyote characters, basically. Like but, a longer, a longer, pointier snout, more yeah. tan, tan in brown and gray, not red, really. Like some of the photos kind of have like a a white, like like eye shadow effect but no not like a whole like socket but they do have the white like under jaw but they're definitely not red colored they're more of like an orangey brown much more subdued mm -hmm. a, lot more, a lot more gray but leo is furry bait he's no. the character that they put in pictures and then you're like wow let's play this game he's got that character in it and then you're like oh no we tricked you <laughs> <laughs> got him all endings are bad endings with leo hooray <laughs> Leo looks at me as if he wasn't expecting me to ask that question. Uh, well, let's hope they do, well, yeah. what do you know if they don't? You know, waterboard they, well, them, Well, what if they do? Good comeback. For their, <laughs> for their own good. That's, uh, he is gonna waterboard them. He nods he would. sagely, seemingly trying to ignore the fact that I'm staring at him like he's missing a few bolts. When I don't say anything, he just sighs turning to head back in the in the direction of Clint and Jeremy. All right, you should head back to the motel and text the rest of the gang. I'll keep you updated. And if you see the... As Leo rounds the side of one of the nearby sheds, something large, brown, and hairy... No. Uh-oh. Juts forth and strikes him in the waist. He recoils, staggering to his knee with a gasp. Just as he looks to see what's hit him, a second blow strikes him square in the muzzle. I see his whole head rattle, his face contorted in pain as he falls flat on his ass, trying to scoot away from the source of the assault. Oh, fuck. It's Brian. Yeah, that music. The music's scary That's, music. No, this is a lot. I've never heard this song yet. Jesus Christ. It's into, this is a really stressful song. Leo. I run out to help him just as a huge bear emerges from around the shed. Leo's a big guy, but this man is nearly a foot taller than even him. Scabs coat his matted Ugh. fur, and a rank smell of stale beer and musk wafts from him like chief perfume. There's something horrible about him, and not just his acrid, hoder, acrid odor or lesion-dotted visage. His eyes are empty. 
Empty not in a physical way, but there's something about his appearance that can't quite put it, uh, can't quite put into words. A combination of factors that make him look like he just walked straight out of a nightmare. Brian, you're you're here. Shut up, man. Brian. God, this is fucking Brian. No wonder Micah wanted to try, to try the subtle approach. Ah, uh, uh, what the hell? Brian chuckles down at Leo. And the first thing I'm struck by is how high-pitched his voice is. It's like this strange combination of Valley Girl Lisp mixed with a hint of helium. <laughs> Sorry, that's not how I've been voicing him at all. They didn't tell me that until after I already established a voice. Yeah, but they, they keep... They just, it's really hard to even imagine what he would sound like. I'm trying to think, like... It breaks my brain a little bit. <laughs> what, like, what you doing, boy? I guess it would be like that. But I'm gonna go back to my normal voice. Whatcha? He kicks at Leo's leg, the wolf grunting in pain. Doing. He smiles, pleased with himself in his little ambush. You know, this is my turf, right? You hurting my boys wasn't a kind thing. Where's Carl? Leo shouts, covered in dirt as he scoots back along the ground. Brian continues to approach him with that same smile, several of his teeth missing or half-rotted to corn kernel-like corn husks. He seems to ignore Leo's question, grabbing at the wolf's pant leg while Leo kicks fruitlessly at him. I gotta do something. Brian hasn't seen me yet. For some reason, the first thing that flashes through my mind is, what would Jenna do? WWJD! <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm walking toward both of them. I see Jeremy in the distance, his eyes going wide. He mouths one word. Don't. Hey. Hey! Stop it. Right now. <laughs> to chastise him like a dog. Yeah. Slap him. You don't slap dogs. No, I'm talking about just the, the idea of, like, comically large characters. You're like, and just like, eh. You're just like, whap. Like, no. But no. <laughs> stop it. The bear stops what he's doing, looking at me with an indiscernible expression. I hate his sprite I, so much. I don't want him on camera. I don't like it. No. He honestly is very distressing. In description and no. in appearance. And considering what we know about him. The portion of the pe of people that get horny for him, I'm just like... Really? Yeah, I'm just like, you wow, guys. Some, of some of y'all don't have limits. <laughs> I don't understand. Y'all... specifically designed to be unappealing. Therapy. How did you get there? Uh, oh, God, he's huge. Your behavior is getting real inappropriate. <laughs> well, yeah, that's really gonna work, Chase. Talk to him like his mother. <sighs> Treat me like your mother. <laughs> well, fuck me. It's you. Oh, background change color. Duke was right. You have been skulking around here these past weeks, haven't you? Leo growls, taking advantage of the distracted Brian by kicking him square in the nads as hard as he can. At least that's where it looks like he was aiming for. Instead it hits his thigh, and the bear stumbles back with a pain to squeal. It's enough to give Leo some time to get back on his feet. I grab my keys from my pocket. My car is still parked a hell of a way, long ways away. I have no idea where Leo parked his van, or if he even drove in the first place. Leo's van. He has a van. Hmm. Come on, Leo, let's go. No. He balls his paws into a fist. He knows where Carl is. Yeah, well, Brian survived a headshot in the previous playthrough, so I don't think you can win this fight. Yeah, Leo doesn't know that, though, but still, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Somebody's too used to winning every fight. This is our only goddamn chance, Chase. Get out of here. Get safe. I blanch as he begins rushing the bear, dropping his shoulder for a football tackle. There's no way. No way in hell Leo can take on this guy. Leo, god damn it! The impact is hard, two heavy bodies colliding with an audible smack. The two topple down upon a wooden pallet covered in loose metal pipes. Brian squeals again, thrashing like a spider that's just been spritzed with bug spray. 
The bear scratches at Leo, but Leo hits him hard in the face. Again and again, pummeling the previously grinning mug into a twisted visage of agony. Brian squeal Brian's squeals turned out right screams, like he's gone completely feral. Jesus, Leo. I said go! Brian jerks forward, sinking his yellowed teeth into Leo's shoulder. The wolf's eyes go wide from the shock of pain, it stunning him still as he is held within the bear's jaws. He tries grabbing his gnarly muzzle, but the bear only clamps down harder. I can see his nostrils dilating with acrid breath puffs, uh, ac acrid breath puffs out in quick, enraged bursts. Oh, dilating as his acrid breath, breath puffs out and in, in, in quick, enraged bursts. There we go. <laughs> Eventually, I made sense of it. <laughs> no, I've never won a fight in my goddamn life, but again, I have to do something. I run up and aim to kick Brian square in the head. Anything to, to get him off of Leo. It's a glancing blow, but it's enough. But the only time that, leg, that Chase's legs have been useful. Finally. I see his jaw unclench. Just as... <laughs> oh my gosh, Chase. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chase. Just as my foot catches and I trip oh over both my... of them, splaying chest gosh. first into the dirt. Chase, you're useless. Oof. He is the girl from the horror movies that can't run and trips over a root. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> or he's like, oh my heel broke while I was while I was running. Oh no, I'm gonna get murdered. <laughs> Leo's gonna owe me so many beers after this. Oh gosh. I cough out sputters of dust and dry dry grass rolling over onto my back. <clears throat> I see a flash of fur and there's another couple of thuds. Then those eyes again, the empty ones. Brian's leering over me now, his face puckered like he just sucked up on something sour. Leo's rolled over on his sides, on his side, retch retching as he clutches his gut. He must have gotten socked in the stomach and hard. Oh gosh, that sucks. The bear says nothing as he places his two large paws around my neck. His expression doesn't so much change as it cracks into an in increasingly wide smile. Then a knee on my chest. I can't move. I can't breathe. My heart begins to race, feeling my own pulse begin to throb. I can feel his thumbs dig down where my jugular is. I gasp for breath, blood vessels beginning to pop, my eyes feeling like they're about to squeeze out of my head. He knows what he's doing. So do you. Ugh. Get away from him. Leo slams his whole body weight into the bear again. It takes all of his force to budge him, but once he's down, he's stunned for a while. I gasp for breath, clutching at my neck and scurrying back behind Leo. Brian's on his paws and knees now, panting with sick, wheezy breaths. Leo scrambles up to his feet and kicks the bear in the ribs. He barely budges, but Leo keeps at it, strike after strike. He's swearing under his breath, a string of words in his native tongue flowing forth from between gritted teeth. I'm still having trouble catching my breath, my whole head throbbing and lights popping in front of my eyes. Brian yanks on the cuff of Leo's jeans and pulls the wolf down with him. He crawls on top, taking Leo's head in one meaty paw and banging it against the ground. I can see him squeezing down, the wolf desperately fail uh, flailing to get him off. He reaches for one of the pipes on the nearby pallet, but Brian catches him before we can get a hold of it. The bear pins both of his wrists above him, grinning in a sort of hazy rage. I run up, trying to push him off, but it's like trying to move a boulder. A single elbow strikes me and I go flying back. I'm just waiting for Micah to show up with the wrench. Yeah, I was kind of, I was like, I, I'm trying to think how else we'd get out of this. Like, yeah, it just feels like they set it up. It feels like I just got hit by a goddamn car, which I know from experience in other timelines. Yeah, it seems familiar to me, but I don't understand <laughs> why. I hear Leo scream in pain, followed by a short, gurgling noise. I've never heard Leo sound like this in my life. It's horrible. Get off! Ugh. Another cry. I gotta do something. 
Maybe I will. No. As I push myself up onto my elbows, my, my head starting to spin, the throbbing in my skull intensifying. I can finally see what's happening. Brian still got Leo pinned to the ground. He has his knee up on his chest and is pressing down oh, with all his no, weight. Oh no, he's so heavy. The wolf heaves, trying to free his hands to no avail. A more primal look crosses his eyes, his toes curling down into the dirt and his paws balling into fists. Leo lean, uh, Brian leans down for just a moment to grin at him when Leo snaps. His white fangs sink down into the, brown, in the, into the brown muzzle of the bear. He's biting hard, and I can practically see the cartilage tearing. It's catch, it catches him off guard enough to let Leo get his paws free again, which he promptly uses to pummel the bear's noggin. Each punch is a short, knuckle-heavy blow, not letting Brian get the opportunity to recover. The upper hand lasts only a couple of seconds, however, as the bear swings his fist blindly and connects right to Leo's temple. Another strike catches the edge of his shirt, and Brian tears it away like it's paper. His eyes shut. He crumples back in a manner that I'm sure means he's unconscious. But he keeps moving, pushing himself out from under Brian and trying to crawl away. Come back here, boy! The shout is loud and Leo begins to crawl faster. Just as he pushes himself to his feet, Brian tackles him back onto all fours again, hitting him in the back of the head. Once he's stopped moving, Brian pushes his face into the dirt. He rests his chest against Leo's back, breathing heavily down on his neck. Fuck off. Leo's eyes begin to dart around rapidly as he realizes what's happening. The emasculating position is very much intentional. Two paws come down and grasp around the back of Leo's neck, huge fingers pressing down on, a, on his airways. Stop! I call out, my voice hoarse. I push myself back up for what feels like the hundredth time. If I can get back, to the, if I can get to the pipes on the pallet, maybe I can stop this. I take one step and nearly collapse. Gosh, Jesus, useless. What the hell is happening to me? I close my eyes for a moment, trying to catch my breath. That's when I hear the sound of pattering little feet scampering across the topsoil. Take this, bitch! Bam. The heavy metal of the wrench strikes Brian in the muzzle right as he turns around. A spray of blood splatters both Brian and the bat. The bear... Uh, the bear hobbling back before roaring in agony, two feet falling from the f two teeth falling from the front of his maw. Ugh. Mm. His whole body quakes with rage. Micah! What are you doing? Micah's chest rises and falls in rapid succession. It apparent his fight or flight responses are kicking in. Oh fuck, oh fuck. As Brian turns to face him, eyes wild, it looks like the ladder has taken hold. That fucking bolts. <laughs> yeah. Sprinting as fast as he can towards the exit of the trailer park and into the desert scrub beyond. Astonishingly, Brian is right behind him. He's way too fast for someone his size and screams like a banshee as he runs. There's a moment where Micah stumbles and I'm sure the bear is going to catch him, but he just dodges out of the way and keeps going. They run and run until I can't see them anymore, and an eerie silence falls upon the trailer park. I head over to Leo, taking him by the shoulder. The fur around his jowls is matted with dry blood, and his tail hangs between his legs, completely still. Leo, are... are you okay? Fuck. It's all I can say as he clutches his head. I agree with that sentiment. So close. Not really, man. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a good read on these situations. Oh, but he feels so powerful. Uh, he feels like a tough boy. I'm about to say something else when I feel the wolf's large arms embrace me. Sorry. The sensitive moment catches me off guard after the brutality which was just on display. Instead of embracing him in return, I'm left feeling uneasy. Sorry? Why are you sorry? 
He doesn't immediately respond, seeming to ignore the question. You okay? Oh, uh, just dizzy. Probably should stay awake for a few hours. Yeah. All the head trauma. Y'all should keep an eye on each other for a few hours. My neck's swollen, and it still kind of hurts to talk and swallow. He pulls back a little and looks at the looks to the horizon. Everything's red for me now. Huh? Leo doesn't respond, and I pull back to look at his face. He seems kind of distant, probably concussed. I glance back to where Jeremy and Clint were and notice they're gone. No trace of them to be seen. I think for a moment that I see the familiar white fur of Micah's head and shoulders in the distance, but he is well out of sight by now. I wonder if, like, Micah just fly away. No, but, I don't think you fly. Yeah, no, I don't think so either, but I wonder if he runs fast enough. If he just sticks his wings out, he can glide like a kite. <laughs> Just, like, jump off a cliff like Link and just fucking, like, sail away. Yeah, about people do, like, they do, like, para paragliding or whatever. Yeah. Which is apparently uh, oh, no. one of the easiest ways to kill yourself because it, seems it's like, it is, like, dangerous. one of the most dangerous sports you can possibly take up yeah. in terms of statistic deaths. But, um, yeah, what if he could just, like, if he was just running, 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 he's like, it's time! And he puts <laughs> his arms out and he, like, whoosh, glides into the wind, you know? Chitty bang bang. Honestly, love you. it probably makes running hard because it probably gets drag. Yeah, no, it's, I don't. I don't think the wings are helpful for any reason. That sucks. It's just a, just a detriment in modern society. That's a bummer. God damn, Micah saved you. You know that. You saved me. I blink, furrowing my brow some. No, that was Micah, the the short bat guy. I hope he's gonna be okay. He's fast and wily. <laughs> he should, should be, be fine. fine. Should be Especially fine. Especially once Brian's adrenaline wears off. Or 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 Micah's runs off first. Like Yeah, I don't know. You knocked out two of his teeth. I feel like he's gonna be incentivized to chase. Yeah. And bears are not slow. Yeah, no, bears are actually the whole thing is like you're not supposed to run from a bear because they can go for a ridiculously long amount of time. They can run a lot farther than you think they'd run in terms of endurance. They will outrun you. Like Is that it? I thought they were just faster. Well, they are faster because humans but, are marathon runners. So that's just, I don't know if anyone else is a better marathon runner than humans. Well, I think the point is that they'll they'll keep pursuing for such a long time that eventually they'll catch up to you. Like there's no point in running. How deep in the woods are you? <laughs> you're, you're just not just, supposed to run from a bear. I'm just thinking like if you're running, you pr you I would I would hope you have somewhere you're planning on getting to. <laughs> I don't think people think that far ahead. I think I think they just think oh this thing's big and slow. But it's not. It's fast, and also it will, it will it will it will keep pursuing you for a very long time. It is with even your bear you facts, chat. Get really far away, and Brian's a, a brown bear. Those are the ones you're supposed to pretend like you want to fight because black bears will fuck. I don't you think no that works on Brian. You do. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to stand up and be like, "Oh, I'm big." Oh no 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 no! Sorry, brown bears are the ones you're supposed to pretend like you're dead. That's what it is. Because black bears are supposed to try to. Uh, try to fight because they won't leave you alone even if you play dead. Leo is so delusional right now. Yeah, I know. He's having a minute. Oh, look at, I hope he's going to be okay. Thanks, Chula. Everything about... He's <laughs> interpreting every line about uh, Micah as being about one of them. Yeah, no. It's like, I hope, I hope Leo's going to be okay. It's like, no, it's not. Not what I said. I love you. I'm struck by the gentleness of his statement. His tone genuine if dazed. The frayed mess of nerves that I am right now, hearing that soothes me just a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, Leo. Love you too. Let's get you back to the motel. I think you mean different things when you say those. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I love you too, bud. Yeah, because we're all friends and we've been through a thing. I look down at the tattered remains of Leo's shirt as we stand up together. Christ, this wasn't productive at all, was it? We limp our way back to my sedan, and after helping Leo into the back seat, we make our way back to the motel. I just wanted to have breakfast. I was promised breakfast, and instead I got choked. TJ's this like, is not an adequate substitute. TJ's like, I wonder where they are. <laughs> he's, like, so, he's so innocent of whatever's happening in most of the in most of these events. It's like, well, they're not here yet. Sh should I should I order or should I yeah. wait? <laughs> I don't want to eat without them. That'd be kind of rude. Uh, the moment we were split up from Jenna, I knew something was going to go wrong. I was not prepared for what was going to go wrong. Yeah, no, that was very wrong. <laughs>